we've considered the fact that what we can have is we can have the electric field lines from a positive charge are going to run out, and the field lines from a negative charge are going to run in. And then we talked about the fact that we can have a distribution of charge, in this case a positive and negative charge, and the field lines will be the sum of the electric field from the two charges. While we can qualitatively draw a picture that looks like this to represent the field, we would also like to be able to quantitatively determine the electric field at any point. So if we consider some point within the field, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to say that there'll be a contribution from the positive charge. We're going to label that E1. It's going to be at some angle theta because the field line is going to run out from the positive charge. And in addition to E1, there's going to be a contribution from the negative charge, which we're going to call E2. The field lines run into the negative charge, so we're going to see that E2 is going to point toward our negative charge, and that's going to be at some angle that we're going to label phi. If we want to look at what's happening with the net field, we're going to have to consider E1 and E2 independently. So as we look at E1, we're going to see, and we're just going to replicate the diagram, we have some angle theta. E1 is going to point out from the positive charge. And because we have E1 pointing somewhere within a two-dimensional plane, we're going to be able to break that up into its x and y components. And so as we've seen before, our x component is going to be the magnitude of E1 multiplied by the cosine of theta. And E1y is going to be E1 multiplied by the sine of theta. To determine the magnitude of the field, we're going to have that E1 is going to be equal to k multiplied by the charge divided by r squared, where r is going to be defined as the physical separation from the point that we're interested in and our charge. Once we have E1, then it's time to consider E2. And so E2, we connect a straight line from the point that we're interested in to our negative charge and this is going to define E2. As we labeled before, we're going to see an angle here we're going to call phi. And now we can define the angle that E2 points at, as it's pointing into quadrant 4, is going to be phi prime, and phi prime is going to be 360 degrees minus that angle phi, because we're removing that small amount from it. And so now, if we consider E2, we're going to be able to define its x component, where E2x is going to be equal to the magnitude of E2 multiplied by the cosine of angle phi prime, and E2y is going to be the magnitude of E2 multiplied by the sine of phi prime. And E2 is going to be equal to k multiplied by now q, which is a negative q charge, and they're divided by their separation squared. And again, the separation is going to be from our charge to the point that we're interested in. At this point, we're simply left with putting things together. So we're going to have our net x field is going to be equal to E1x plus E2x. And so what we have is that gives us our net field in the x direction. And then we're going to look at our net field in the y direction. And similarly, we're going to see that our net field in the y direction is going to be E1y plus E2y. Now in this case, we don't have numbers to deal with. But we'll pretend that they're both positive values when we're done. And so what we have is we then draw our E net x. So we see our E net x is pointing to the right in this case. And we have our E net y. And our E net y is going to be pointing up in this case. So we draw those. And our resultant is going to connect the tail of E net x to the head of E net y. And because we have a right angle triangle, we're going to see that E net is going to be defined as the square root of E net x squared plus E net y squared because we can employ Pythagorean theorem. In order to fully describe the field, we also need to know the angle because the electric field is a vector. And so we're going to see here the angle that we've defined as theta is going to be tan theta is equal to e net y divided by e net x, or the angle is going to be the arc tangent of e net y divided by e net x. And we've now described a two-dimensional electric field.